Welcome back to the station. We're doing a special series of programs on the governor's uh, Republican governor's primary. There we go. So the rub is saying, yeah, the Republican governor's primary. We're in, we're in primary season in Kentucky, and and uh, really the only race is, is amongst Republicans because there's we have an incumbent, Andy Bashir, is a Democrat, and so we're trying to find what Republican will go up against Andy in the general election. And so we've got, um, I should say, King Andy in, in the general election. Um, so we have a wonderful candidate uh, tonight, and, and there are, like, there's a there's a, uh, a field of 12 candidates total, and but there's a top tier, and I would say uh, Mayor Alan Keck is in that top tier, and so we want to invite him and and, uh, and say hello. So, Mayor Keck, how are you? Oh, I'm doing well. I right. certainly appreciate you having us on, and uh, appreciate being included and allowing us to share some of our heart and our, our vision for Kentucky. Absolutely. So you're the mayor of Somerset, Kentucky, a beautiful town right there on the lake, and and, uh, and so. What, what, what's yes, it sir. like being a mayor of that uh, that, that part of uh, of Kentucky? What, what's 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 some of the challenges you've you've dealt with, and and how long have you been mayor in that city? Well, let me just start by saying it, it's been the honor of my life to get to lead and serve my hometown. You know what a, what an awesome opportunity to get to as a, a young man, young businessman, to get the challenge and the blessing to restore what I think is a gem in southern and eastern Kentucky. Certainly some challenges. One is we're challenging uh, age old paradigms that small town Kentucky is stale and stagnant and that you know, our best days are behind us. Uh, we don't believe that. And I haven't believed that. And we've led in a manner that's challenged a lot of that and encouraged our citizens to dream again. And it's led to some historic progress and some historic fruit. And we're really starting to uh, enjoy the benefit of that. Look forward to what lies ahead as well. That's exciting. Yeah. If you um, study uh, trends, um in the U.S., especially uh, moving trends, you know, how people are moving from one place to another. The, the trend now is to move away from bigger cities into small towns. And so, so you, you, we see that definitely around Louisville, for example. People are leaving Louisville and going to Simpsonville or wherever. And so, but I think that that trend will play out throughout the state uh, over the next decade. And so, yeah, that's a beautiful. Yeah, I, I, if I may, I, I think we've got a generational opportunity there uh, across rural Kentucky to take advantage of folks that are looking for what I call Kentucky values. Uh, we've, we've been really successful. One entity in particular, we recruited a corporate headquarters uh, of a logistics company from Fresno, California to Little Old Somerset. Mm. And it's because wow. we're talking about quality of life and quality of place, uh, selling what an amazing state and commonwealth this is, and they're drawn to it. You know, sometimes yeah. people challenge us that, uh, we might not be as welcoming as other places. Well, I, I would argue the absolute opposite. Uh, we're seeing a lot of Americans that are desperate for our values, uh, the quality of life that we have, the cost of living that we have. And I, I think we need to leverage it and lean into it. That's beautiful. Yeah, you hear a lot about the, you know, the California refugees moving to Nashville. But, uh, hey, come on to Kentucky. You know, we, we've got it. We've got it. And uh, uh, I, I think a much better offer. So. But um, well, that's that's tremendous. All right, well, let's talk about the campaign. So there was a debate a couple of nights ago, and uh, and it was pretty pretty heated debate. There were a lot of a lot of arrows flying back and forth between the um, the candidates. And uh, you, you, of course, you were there. And, um, and of course, the 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 two uh, primary, uh, I, guess, I guess the leaders in the in the uh, in the field, uh, Cameron and and Kraft, were were going at it. And uh, then of course, Dieters. Uh, Another candidate was uh, was was egging him on and adding a few things, and then you and the, you and uh, Ryan Quarles were were not so much in the mix, and but I think you you mentioned that that was a good thing. Matter of fact, I've got a clip here. I'll play just of, of your comments. Uh, actually, sure. no, I'm not going to play that. Actually, I don't have it queued up, so I'll try to get that queued up at the end of this. Yeah. Show. But um, well, I, you know, I interjected in the middle of it, and I think I did add some commentary after that you're mentioning. But I just said, look, the last 10 minutes of this debate are why so many in America are sick and turned off about politics. You know, we're beating each other down and we're tearing each other down instead of casting vision. And one of the things we've done throughout this campaign that I'm really proud of is avoided uh, this nastiness and this divisiveness. And I've talked about the future of Kentucky. You know, I think that there are so many that they want to talk about President Trump. Now they want to talk about Ron DeSantis. Maybe they want to dig on Joe Biden. Look, we've got generational problems here. And what I'm interested in is restoring the, the beauty and the greatness of Kentucky. And I don't have to tear somebody else down to want to do that. And, you know, for me, 
I think that there is a, a, a large swath of the voters that's just looking for a steward who can get things done. They want government that's going to excel at what's necessary. And then what's not necessary, they want them to get out of their way and get out of their life. That's how we've led in Somerset. You know, I fashion myself as a common sense, do something type leader. And I've done that in the private sector. We've done it in government. And I, I know without a shadow of a doubt, and I can say it with humility, that we can do that across Kentucky uh, should I have the opportunity to lead and serve the state. Mm, well said, well said. Well, well so, so tell us um, about your campaign. So obviously we're trying to uh, unseat um, uh, you know, Governor Andy Bashir. So yeah. whoever wins this will, will be, you know, wins this primary will be up against him. And so what makes you the best candidate to do that? And uh, you, you talked about a future of the of, of the state and uh, casting a vision there. That's a beautiful thing because Kentucky, you know, we need vision. Every 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 uh, political uh, municipality needs leaders with vision. But but I think our state more than more than others even. So but besides that, well, what makes you the best candidate to to tackle uh, Andy Bashir? Well, I appreciate that question. I'm going to start by saying that you know beating Andy is a step in the goal. You know, for me, that winning an election is not the goal governing well and putting Kentucky on the right trajectory is the ultimate goal. You know, so we hear often that the only goal is to beat Andy. That's just, that's just an election that doesn't change the trajectory of Kentucky alone. And so we need a, somebody who not just who can win, but then who can go lead. I'm going to answer your question specifically though, with three things. Uh, I think that we have campaigned in what I call radical authenticity and transparency. We've answered over 1200 questions now. You know, so anything that Kentuckians want to know about me, uh, a citizen, the media alike, they're going to get to know. And so no more cookie cutter politicians, no more what I call sort of rip the cord uh, Republican answers, but authenticity. I think that's important if we're going to unseat a popular incumbent. Uh, the second thing I would tell you, though, is my executive experience is really, really unique, uh, not only in the Republican primary, but against Andy. You know, Governor Bashir. Uh, was sort of, you know, a, a lawyer who his father helped make attorney general and then make governor. He's never led at a high level. He's never built or assembled a team, which is why I think we've seen so many administra uh, administrative failures out of his administration. They've never led at, at a high level. Uh, some of those same challenges exist in the Republican primary. While it is a good field and a quality field of individuals, there's nobody in this race that brings the same level of executive experience that I do as a CEO in the private sector, you know, running a family business that do business all over this country, and then now a CEO of one of the largest municipalities in the state. And so that executive experience is really unique. And then I'll close by talking about the vision. You know, scripture says several things uh, about vision. One, without one, people will perish. It also says that you should make your vision and write it plain on tablets. I did that. You know, when I filed on November 21st, the Keck game plan was out there for the world to see. People can can read exactly where I intend to take Kentucky and how we intend to do it. And we focus on four things, the economy, public safety, education, and then pro-family policies. Uh, I, I think Kentucky has an opportunity on pro-family policy to take a lead nationally where we move the discussion beyond just life, but how government can better facilitate uh, the evolution uh, of families, because we know that when, you know, mom and dad are, are together, when they're working, that children do better and families do better. And it'll help us, I think, economically, it'll help our public safety crisis, and then it'll help us in the classroom as well. And so I'm excited about the CAT game plan. I love talking about it. And every day we get out there, people are embracing that vision. That's beautiful. So we're, um, we're joined tonight with Bob uh, Scott, who's our, my co-host. So, so Bob, would you like to, um, weigh in with uh with mayor keck here do you have any thoughts so yeah no i i think alan brings a, a very unique perspective to the race uh, he talked a little bit about uh, his uh ceo background and uh, president background of uh his uh, family business uh down in somerset that, that's been very successful um i had an opportunity he probably doesn't remember but uh, a couple years ago uh, with another organization that I was working with at the time, but I had a chance to meet him and, and his uh, father. Uh, just absolutely wonderful people and uh, d doing great things uh, for the Southern Kentucky area. Um, what I'm wondering, Alan, is um, I was disturbed a little bit by by the um, debate, you know, the other night, and and I really hated to see uh, Kraft. Um, 
go, you know, and not just crack the camera. They both went at, at each other. And I think it's going to be very critical uh, when this race or the primary is over with, whoever rises to the top, that, that a united front happens and people join hands and, and, and work together to uh, with the ultimate mission of, of taking um, the, as you mentioned earlier, the state forward. And, and with regard to your background, I know you talked about it a little bit, but could you elaborate just a little bit more uh, what your vision would be, let's just say your first 100 days in office or uh, maybe first year in office as far as uh, getting the state uh, that has been, quite frankly, in many, many ways, you, you did touch upon this, mismanaged uh, over the last three years. What, what would be your vision, you know, with regard to us moving forward as a state? Yeah, I would love to. I think that it starts with growth. You know, Kentucky just left our second slowest decade of growth in 100 years. And with our natural resources and God-given amenities, I think that's just abysmal. And it's a lack of vision and lack of leadership. So uh, everything I tell people, everything we do needs to be with that growth mindset, because with growth, and then you can fund a lot of the other things that we're talking about. Uh, I mean, growth very literally in population. We need more people living here. Uh, but then secondly, and I've led the way on this discussion, we need a higher percentage of people that live here working. We've been as low as 49th in America in workforce participation. And so what that means practically is over 40% of people who should be contributing to society and providing that dignity of going to work every day and earning what they're getting or choosing to stay home, well, that then creates undue burden on the folks that are showing up. And so we have policy that I talk about taking care of the working poor instead of paying those unwilling to work, uh, sliding scale benefit reform, or those that are doing their absolute best and contributing at a high level uh, will get to keep a piece of that benefit instead of paying somebody to sit at the house. I think that policy alone can transform our economy. Uh, but in addition to that, we've got to fund law enforcement. We're not going to reach our potential. We're never going to have a strong Kentucky until we have a safe Kentucky. And tragically, we've never been more unsafe. We know of the tragedies that have gone on in Louisville, but it's not recent. You know, we've broken records three years, three out of four years, I think, in murders and violent crime in our two largest cities. It's unacceptable. So in Louisville, you know, I want to see us get to full staff. We've got 250 officers short statewide where the governor's responsible, almost 300 troopers short. We need to make sure that we're a law and order state or a state that backs the badge. Any, anyone who wears the badge, fire, police, EMS, corrections, and then, of course, those that serve in the military, they need to know that we've got their back and word and indeed. Uh, I mentioned education policy. I think it's time we start to have the discussion of getting to our kids sooner, you know, having the opportunity where we can teach all Kentuckians uh, sooner. The stats are conclusive. This might not happen uh, immediately, but we'll see the fruit in it that if we can educate our children, and I don't just mean in public schools, but given the, the, the amenities in private Christian schools, home schools, I want to raise the bar across all three levels of education because I'm sick of getting stuck in the muck. And if we're going to change generational poverty, we have to have some big ideas. And so I want to sort of tackle this, uh, this challenge. We're struggling in so many areas. I don't think one policy alone can do it. Uh, but but restoring our workforce, making sure we're safer, and then transforming our education system across all levels, I think is a heck of a start. And I know it, it's not it's it's ambitious, but it's policy that can absolutely happen. Let me, let me interject real quick, Bob. So I'm really curious to what what um, Mayor Keck would say to this because he's a mayor, right? So so we're dealing with a lot of um, I guess policy perspectives that are that are different between you know state government and and, and uh, city governments in our state, and so. Um, and there's there's been calls in, in other states and other around the country that maybe con red states, uh, you know, conservative leadership in states should start pressing, uh, you know, liberal mayors of, of Democrat run cities to start you know, doing something different or maybe even pulling power away from some of these some of these mayors. And and uh, it, so um, it, lots of ways to approach that. But it, it, as a mayor, um, what what could a uh, what could you do as governor to really help Louisville move the right direction? What what if you have a a mayor in Louisville that just refuses to uh, to, to change the, his his policing yeah. policy? Well, what what can be done? You know. Well, I think that's where leadership is so important, and that might sound like a cop out, but you know, here here's what I know. God blessed me in a in a in a few ways immensely. I'm I'm really good at a few things, and I'm not good at a lot. One of the, one of the things though that He blessed me in is the ability to bring people together. You know, President Reagan was famous when he negotiated and started listening to Gorbachev. They, they, they talked and he got criticized. People said, what are you talking to him for? 
And Reagan said that we get a lot more done when we start talking to each other and instead of about each other. And so what I intend to do is sit down with the General Assembly, sit down with Louisville Metro Council and say, hey, what, what can state government do to help you? And here's what we need you to do for Louisville so that this great city, this fine American city, what should be a top 20 American city can do to help the rest of the state. You know, we need a strong Louisville. Uh, economically, I think Louisville generates as much economic output as their next 17 cities combined. And so I want to lead the way at that discussion, but I also want to be a good listener making sure that they have the tools from us. You know, what I hear from folks in Louisville is they're disenfranchised because they're our economic engine, but most of the money that they generate to the state budget doesn't come back. Well, as a business person, that doesn't make sense. You reinvest in things that produce more fruit, allowing the whole pie to grow in which then we can help the, you know, the rural cities that might not be contributing as much. The exact same thing is going on in Northern Kentucky. So those are a couple just leadership principles that I would submit to the folks that are listening that might be unique. Um, I don't promote or submit that we should strip power away from locals. I think it's bad precedent. I don't want Washington doing it to us in Kentucky. I don't think Frankfurt should do it to cities, uh, but they might need us to help, you know, walk side by side and make sure they understand, hey, what you're doing is not working. We need to try something different or we're going to have to look at other options. Um, I, I think I also have the, the unique ability uh, to bridge that gap of urban rural. You know, I understand the things that can unite people and that can bring us together. And I come from a city where I think 10 of the 12 city councilors voted against me. Well, I can tell you that I think 10 of the 12 voted for me in the last election and they've supported my vision throughout my administration uh, because I listen and I can uh, explain to them why this vision makes sense. I think I can do the exact same thing with leadership in Louisville. That's wonderful. So, you know, Bob and I were talking before this interview about how um, issues cultural issues are, are so important and and to, to our voters and ha how they're really well how that you know states are really a front line now for for a lot of these issues you know and mm -hmm. and and how uh, you know for example um you're protecting women's sports you know or or preventing children from uh uh, you know, pre preventing people from operating, doing sex change operational children, for example, you know, just yeah. these, these are, these are very important. So how, how would your administration, you know, tackle these sort of, uh, hot button cultural issues that are, that are important to a lot of people? Well, I, I'm going to do my very, very best to treat them as I think the Lord would, um, that he's going to not compromise on principle, uh, but he's still going to treat people with grace, love and respect. You know, I, I've stood pretty aggressively against, uh, the transgender issue, especially in our adolescents. And I've gotten some pushback that how can you say you love these people uh, and then say it should be criminal for a teen, uh, you know, a teen to get uh, the gender transformation. And I say, it's very simple. They're still a human being. I can still love them and respect them by disagreeing um, adamantly in that procedure, allowing somebody to change God's intended order for their life. Uh, that won't impact that I'll treat them with love and respect. And I think as a Christian, we're called for that. You know, the Lord was really clear when he was asked what the two most important commandments are. He said two things and he said them very specifically. You know, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and, and, and soul, and then love your neighbor as yourself. And loving your neighbor doesn't come with asterisks, but that doesn't mean that we have to agree with this, this type of decision. I've also said the doctors should be prosecuted criminally I, I, for a sex change in, in an adolescent. I stand by those things. And again, if I were to see a, a, a transgender adult, um, I would treat them with grace and mercy, and um, I'm not a perfect human either. I've, I've made some mistakes in my life. So I, I don't think they're mutually exclusive. You know, I'm drinking out of a mug uh, that my, my five-year-old got me at, at the, um, the, uh, the book fair at school, and it says my dad's a blast. I understand that when kids have love and affection from a mom and a dad, it, it, it it's, produces better life outcomes. You know, marriage is God's most perfect institution. Um my ability to be a father and lead my household is his greatest gift to me. And I want other people to experience that. It's why I want policies that will incentivize behaviors that we want. You know, I do think there is such a thing as good governance. I'm a Republican that believes in good government, not no government. And so I want to, I want to defend some of these issues that are really important to uh, your listeners. And I think the majority of Kentuckians, but I also want to be sensitive to some of the issues. You know, I'll tell you that, I had a meeting with, with leaders in the African-American community recently, and one of the things they told me is, what good is it to have policy or programs if none of the people that they're intended to help know about it? 
Well, just today I was in Hazard and I was hearing the same thing from folks in East Kentucky. And what I have said is so many of these challenges aren't necessarily racial, they're socioeconomic. The, the, the struggle that might be happening in the West End could be exactly what's happening in East Kentucky. They want a government that's responsive, that listens, and will help them. And again, I think that's the type of leader I can be. That's wonderful. Bob, I'm going to leave you with the last question. So, so uh, go ahead. Yeah, again, I, I think it's, it's critically important that uh, the next governor uh, will be a uniter. And, 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 uh, and you obviously, uh, Mayor Keck, have, have made that crystal clear that you plan on working on other sides, but also working within the party. I know uh, our uh, last Republican governor, there was some issues uh, associated uh, with him, even with working with the supermajority. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, on both the, the Senate and, um, you know, the House of Representatives. And uh, so I'm hopeful and, uh, that, you know, all these gaps will be able to be bridged uh, again for the, the common good of the state. I love to hear about your, your faith and believe in, in Jesus Christ. And um, because we know at the end of the day, that is the most important thing. And uh, yes, sir, sir. just uh, Again, I, Tom, I, I, I'm really, uh, it's going to be a tough, <laughs> it's going to be tough. I, there are easily four or five candidates that I could, I could vote for uh, in the Republican primary. And um, Mr. Keck, I appreciate uh, that. I, and I truly hope, and I, I guess my, I'm a, I'm big about United We Stand, Divided We Fall, our state motto. And, and again, once this primary season, which has gotten a little bloody, uh, is over, I'm hoping uh, that everybody will come together and a good Christian conservative will be uh, backed and uh, put in, in office, uh, you know, come November. Well, what I would, I would submit to you as a commitment is that I'll be a part of that solution, whether I'm the nominee or not. You know, I think that... Uh, I can be a leader that can help bring folks back together. I have strong relationships with several of the other candidates. I've campaigned throughout that they're not my opponents. I just have 11 other people applying for the same job that I'm applying for in a very public way. And, you know, my pledge is that I'll be a big part in that uniting. I care about these issues as well. Uh, I care about them regardless if I'm the governor or not, because I know the real solutions for Kentucky. And I understand the need to generate and build consensus. You know, you mentioned one of the challenges that we saw in the previous administration. Uh, you know, scripture talks about God opposing the proud. We need to make sure we have a leader who has some humility that realizes their gifts come from the Lord. And uh, that's also humble enough to know they don't have all the answers. You know, I, I try to surround myself with other competent leaders, uh, experts in their fields that are passionate about moving Kentucky forward. Uh, I think I can be a part of that discussion, win or lose. Very good. Well, that's exciting. And the most important question, have you turned the water back on in Lake Cumberland? Is, it, is, it, is, it, is the lake back up yet? Is it you, can, you can absolutely come enjoy the lake. We've had back-to-back uh, -back record years in tourism, and we're expecting another big record this year. So uh, okay. come on down. The water will be – it'll be cold right now, but it'll be warm this summer. <laughs> that's right. It's a be beautiful part of the state. Well, Mary, thanks for joining us. We really appreciate your time. We're, we're excited about your candidacy and, and – uh, and if you like, so if you're a viewer and, and you're trying to make a decision, you've got some great choices this year. And so uh, we, we certainly recommend Mayor Kay. Uh, well, very good. Thanks for joining us. And you're watching, uh, if you're watching the station, we'll see you next week.